In France, thousands marched this week to protest the policies of the G20, which is meeting tomorrow in Cannes. Because the city is cordoned off to protesters, activists organized a rally and counter-summit in Nice. Mado Habashi from Egypt was in the streets Tuesday. The peoples of the world in the south and in the north are facing the same enemy. Always more people in the world recognize this fact that we are facing the same enemy and we have to coordinate our struggles together. Sound courtesy of alterechoes.org. One of the issues global activists want leaders to approve at the G20 meetings is what's called a financial transaction tax, also known as the Robin Hood tax. Supporters argue everyday citizens shouldn't bear the burden of bailing out banks, many of which are now reporting record profits. The plan would levy a half percent tax on financial institution transactions and has support from some EU countries who estimate it could generate nearly $80 billion per year. In the U.S., lawmakers introduced similar legislation in Congress today. Matt Laszlo has the details. As the Occupy Wall Street protests have gained steam and fanned out across the nation, some lawmakers now think they can piggyback off the movement. Iowa Democratic Senator Tom Harkin has reintroduced a bill to tax Wall Street firms for the same speculative trading that helped lead to the financial bubble that collapsed in 2008. I think, uh, I think more and more people are supporting People around the country are supporting what they're seeing and for occupying Wall Street and all the other occupation moves around the country. Uh, there's been a great groundswell of support there, and I think once they find out about this, I think they're going to be very supportive of what we're trying to do. The legislation won't tax any initial trades, such as a traditional loan from a financial firm. The tax only applies when a firm turns around and bundles or retrades an investment. The European Union is considering a similar tax, nicknamed the Robin Hood tax, which would levy a half percentage point tax on all derivative and bond trades. The version introduced in the U.S. is more modest and only amounts to three pennies per every $100 traded, which Harkin says major U.S. financial firms can absorb. There's no question that Wall Street can easily bear this modest tax. Just last week, the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office reported that over the last three decades, the after-tax income of millionaires and billionaires increased by 275 percent. 275% increase. Oregon Democratic Congressperson Peter DeFazio says the U.S. stock market used to be backed up by real goods, but now he says speculators buy and trade fictional commodities. DeFazio says the legislation would incentivize getting back to a goods-based economy. And it starts with getting rid of some of the most uh, egregious and unproductive and volatile of these super high-volume, quantitatively driven uh, traders. Sponsor Sage's taxing speculative trading a little bit will help reduce the risks everyday citizens take by investing in the stock market, which they argue will help curb the wild swings witnessed in global markets. Iowa Democratic Congressperson Bruce Braley says the stock market has become too impersonal. These supercomputers are based on timing principles that have no consideration of how these companies are being managed the shareholders who are being impacted, or the employees who work at those companies. But even asking for a small tax increase is still a non-starter with many Republicans. Alabama's Richard Shelby is the top Republican on the Senate Banking Committee. He says in trying to calm speculation, the legislation sponsors will inadvertently hurt the free market. Well, you want to do that. You don't want to take risk out of the market. You want to make sure people that are doing risk don't risk the taxpayer, risk their own money. The bill's sponsors say the new tax could bring in hundreds of billions of dollars to the U.S. Treasury over a decade. Senator Harkin says the Joint Congressional Committee should consider the new tax as it looks to trim more than a trillion dollars from the federal debt. So today, as the Super Committee considers deep budget cuts to programs that serve seniors and students, our most vulnerable citizens, this Wall Street tax is a matter of simple prudence, fairness, and fiscal sanity. Nurses and other labor groups will be calling for the Robin Hood tax on speculative trading at the G20 summit in France. On Thursday, a similar protest will be held in Washington, D.C. Matt Laszlo, FSRN, Washington.